Hi everyone, I'm Journal Page today and I'm working in this uh, sketchbook. I've asked what I want to do on this page, it's partly planned and I just forgot to uh, <laughs> protect the spiral here so I'm going to put a little bit of masking tape. Here we go. So this page uh, was inspired by a video I've seen by uh, Simon Says uh, Stamp. It's not going to look alike, it just inspired and what I wanted is a lot of texture. I want a lot of texture on uh, this page and I wanted a branch on it. So first of all, <coughs> sorry, I'm going to start by putting down some gauze here on my page and you can use cheese uh, cloth. I'm just going to use this and I'm messing with this so it, there will be more interest. I'm using two pieces just so I will have something to cover not cover but I want something to go like this on my page and I'm going to adhere it in a minute just playing around with it I don't want it symmetrical so here we go so we'll start with this and I'm going to take some white glue plain white glue And start with this just applying generously on my page so I to make sure it will stay in place if you like a uh, working with a gel medium then you can use that I if I can avoid it I avoid it I don't like it too much and now I'm just going over with the white glue and wherever it goes it goes this is quite random there is no planning in the how it's sticking to the page and another one here and again going over if you don't like something you can still move it it takes time until <coughs> the glue uh, dries so you can play with it okay so I've got this and now I want to add texture to the rest of my page <coughs> what happened to my voice what I'm going to use I'm going to use some joint compound or each place uh, calls it differently it's any kind of paste that is already made and you can get at the hardware store I also used wood filler <coughs> it's just uh, <coughs> cheaper than a uh, modeling paste so uh, I've got joint compound or well compound or wood filler and I don't know how to explain it I just know that it works I've used it before to create a distressed uh, look to a page so that's what I'm going to use now and I'll show you in a minute what it's what I'm going to do right now I just put it down in several places now I'm taking some gesso again in several places like 
so and I've picked two colors that I want in my background and first I'm going to use the lighter one this is a blue bouquet by deco art and this one is navy blue by deco art I will show you in a minute in another I've done another page with completely different colors I will show you how it looks just so you you will see how you can work with this uh, technique okay so just a little bit it doesn't need too much and I'm going to take one of my oldest and more uh, a coarse bristle brush like so and now just going like this this is quite random now I'm just going to cover my page the only thing is that I do try to have from each if it's the um, gesso or the paint or <coughs> the wall compound to have it all over but it's random it's not planned and I keep uh, going and smearing it and I'm looking for uh, the brush uh, to have brush strokes that's why I've picked this kind of brush that uh, is very has a very hard bristles I need just a little bit more here don't have enough in the corner so I'll just pick a little bit of the joint compound and put a drop here and that's it so I will have a complete coverage I just keep on because I really like uh, the more I go and it starts to uh, dry quite quickly then I have more distressed look more texture more distressed look and I think this is it so now I've got this I am going to let this dry and then I'll come back I'm back and I want to add more texture I'm going to use this stencil and again the joint compound and I want to add it in several places on my page again quite random not concerned about accuracy or anything just putting down some in more interest more texture just a little bit more Yeah, and I want just a little bit. Let's see if I can uh, put it down. Yeah, I want a little bit more here. Yeah, so I've got this, and I still want more texture. And first of all, I'll just scrap this a little bit never uh, leave 
a stencil with modeling paste, joint compound, whatever, it, it will get ruined. So, uh, now I want more texture and I'm going to put here again a little bit of the joint compound and I'm going to add to it to this uh, some seed beads. I've got tons of them, I don't use them, I have them like I think three decades and I figured if I will j put them in uh, the joint compound I can have more texture. So I don't care about the color, I'm just going to take some, drop it here. Let's see if I have something to pick them up. Oh, never mind. Now they are probably going to be all over the place, like glitter. Seed beads just go everywhere. I'm going to add a little bit more. There are all kinds of uh, paste in craft stores that already have all kinds of things in them to give texture but once again i'm not <laughs> buying them it's just too it's too expensive i'm using what i have i hope this will stick don't know maybe i will add more of the joint compound We'll see. I'm still not concerned about the color showing through because I'm going to cover it. Okay. So, not my best idea, but I've tried. <laughs> okay. I'll just add a little bit more of the joint compound just to make sure it sticks and we'll hope for the best. Right now it doesn't seem like it will stay in place. Okay, so this needs to uh, dry completely before we move on the next phase <laughs> I'll be back I'm back so this is dry and luckily the beads are uh, set and didn't fall off now I've got here the gesso I've got a drop of the uh, light blue that we've already uh, used and I've got a drop of the darker blue now first of all I'm going to go with uh, the gesso and a little bit of the light blue over the areas that I've added and from uh, viewers from the United States told me that joint compound in the United States is water soluble so I don't know why here it that it's not but if it is for you uh, then just after you are using uh, the joint compound like here like with a stencil just go over it with a little bit of a gesso to seal it it's either that or you can also seal it with uh, with white glue So I'm gently going over because some of the beads are now uh, falling off. <laughs> Never mind. Maybe I didn't wait enough time for it to dry. need a little bit more of this
just so it will go with the rest of my page and just adding here and there okay so now I need to completely make it a uh, have it dry but I am going to show you what I'm going to do with this darker color now again I'm using a very hard bristle brush and I'm taking a, a very uh, <laughs> a really small amount of paint and I'm going to do a dry brush over my texture and it's always good to take a little just a dab it so you will make sure it your brush is almost uh, completely dry and now I'm just going like this and picking up texture where I want it you don't have to go over everything it's up to you I'm do it, doing it quite randomly so instead of this being completely white, now I'm picking up the texture with this uh, dry brushing. I will also go over the beads only it's still wet. So just showing you what's going on. And I can also pick details of the texture here where I have the gauze or cheesecloth whatever you used you can even uh, use tissue paper wrinkle tissue paper uh, backing off a paper napkin anything goes okay so I'm going to uh, wait for this to dry and keep with adding some of the darker color to uh, my page I can also go here on where I only have texture from the brush and add and I'm going about it quite lightly if I want more I can add to subtract would be <laughs> Uh, quite impossible so go easy so I'm going to move this aside for right now and I'm going to show you the other page I've done and this is the same technique here in the background completely the same the only thing is I used here uh, I used I think it was ochre uh, or some kind of yellow and some orange and that's it that's the same texture in the back so moving this aside also my focal point I wanted some branch on my uh, page and I was lazy about it I didn't want to start drawing a branch so I went on the internet and I've looked for free uh, printables and there is this site free pick yes with PIK Dot com and they have lots of uh, free printables not all but they have and I've printed this olive branch now I've played a, a, a little bit with it with, with my Photoshop but I could also use it as is I just enlarged it a little bit and then what I've done when I'm doing this is my uh, most of the time that's the process I'm doing I've taken a tracing paper and just put it on and started to play now I I didn't care for the olives and even when I'm uh, printing something that is free I will always change it um, because this is not my art and it doesn't take a, a lot to just change I if you can see I've changed a little bit uh, and add, added another uh, leaf so 
but you can do whatever is uh, good for you so now I've got this and this is going to be a template that I will keep because then I will trace it again on acetate and I will cut it and I will have a stencil as you can see I have another one here that I didn't cut uh, yet I just want to show you to, for those who doesn't who don't know or didn't see um, other um, videos of how I make my stencils and if you don't have acetate you can use plastic dividers they are very cheap they are office supply and it's easier to cut so once I've traced it with a permanent marker what I'm doing is I'm using a uh, nail scissors because they have a curve and it's easier to cut and they are more delicate than any other regular scissors and sometimes I'll use a, an exacto knife now an exacto knife uh, for me it's easier to do some incision in the middle of the shapes and it lets me go in uh, more easily with the scissors but it does you don't have to it's what's again what's working for you so just so you will see I'm not going to cut this whole thing now that's not the point of this video okay so I'm in and now I will ju just go with the curve like so now when you get to a let's call it a junction and you have a very uh, difficult uh, <laughs> What's the name for it? Angle, yeah. Then, again, if you can do it with the scissors, great. No, go with the exacto knife, like so. And then continue. And again, now the curve is going like this, so I will just flip the scissors and again use it to my advantage and so on going around so now i've got i will have also a stencil and i have a template that i can use in the future when, wherever i want and I've already traced it, I've used copy paper or graphite paper, whatever you call it, and traced my uh, branch on this uh, scrapbook paper. And I, that's what I was uh, thinking of using as my focal point. Now I'm not sure, I don't like how it's so flat. I can add some... Uh, shading and color to each leaf but I'm not sure about it and just so you will know this also won't get a um, toast I'm going to fussy cut it and just use it in one of my journals I, if I remember correctly I even have one with olive branches in the background let's see yeah here it is so I can cut it and use it here. So I'm going to think about <laughs> how to make the branch and I'm going to wait for everything to get dry on my background and I'll be back. I'm back. So focal image. Didn't find anything that I liked so I decided I will make my own. And I just took the stencil and traced the, the outer uh, lines here on this uh, paper. This is 240 grams a uh, paper, quite heavy, but because I thought I will use some kind of watercolor, but decided against it again. <laughs> I, I'm going to play, I want each uh, 
leaf to be in a different shade. I've got felt pens and I've got Stabilo uh, more, um, highlighters and I'm just going to go and make each in a different color and simple just coloring don't care like so I think uh, I think I'll, the stem I will uh, use this one the darker green I don't want it in brown so I'll just make the stem here like this I'm going to stamp all over uh, the leaves so I don't care if there is brush strokes from the felt pens so I've got this let's do what color let's take this one so basically this is it now if you are uh, doing something like this on watercolor paper you can go over felt pens with a brush with a little bit of water and you will get a a look like it's watercolors let's try it here it's a thick paper what can what's the worst that could happen now just a uh, bear in mind when you are doing this uh, on watercolor paper I don't know if it will work here but on watercolor paper it takes a few seconds you need to wait for to, to see the effect We'll see if it will work or not. Okay, so I'm going to continue going uh, each uh, leaf with different color, like so. Basically, there will be green, maybe a little bit. Uh, blue we'll see I'm not sure yet I'm just playing around and after uh, it's it's dry from the water I've put on and I can also see that it's uh, reacting I'm going to stamp each leaf with different uh, step I'll be back I'm back so I'm going to stamp now I'm I'm going to try and do it very quick. I'm losing a time of recording. I only can record about 30 minutes on my phone and I've taken these dots and I'm not trying to be accurate because I'm going to fussy cut it out of the page so it doesn't matter. Let's pick uh, this one. and just another one and now this uh, stamp that has squares on it really doesn't matter just playing with adding details I've also taken out some uh, text um, stamp uh, that I'm going to stamp on several of the, these leaves. So I'm going to continue. I'll fussy cut it so we can move on. I'll be back. I'm back. So here is my focal image. I stamped. I 
uh, added a black contour uh, around with the black marker and I still feel like I am missing something in the back so I'm just going to add a little bit of green because this is very green this is very uh, <laughs> to the blue I want to add some green but very faded in the background I'm going to use uh, the stencil I've made and let's start with this this is a bundled sage by distress ink by Tim Holtz and I just want a faded image in the background it will also repeat the focal image because it's from the same stencil but it will also introduce the green into the background and where I have a lot of texture it will not uh, take but I don't care I'm just going and wherever it goes it goes like so and let's see I think I'll try this for a minute here I'm afraid of this <laughs> that this color won't work mm, too bright maybe I'll just keep on with the bundle sage just a little bit more and then I will adhere my focal image and I've already got words that I want to use So, and yeah, let's just do a little bit more. Again, not concerned about accuracy. It needs to be faded and just give the impression of this branch. Let's see. Oh yeah, now I'm <laughs> now I'm satisfied. So I'm just going to put some glue, and my uh, words are everything is figurable. <laughs> I'm removing the masking tape. I'm going to adhere it, and I'll come back. So here it is, and that's my page. I really, really like, especially the background, all this distressed look and all this texture. I had so much fun making it. I hope you'll try your hand at something like that. Thank you for watching, and thank you for leaving me comments below. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.